In our final video for our total joint replacement education, you're going to have an opportunity to review what to expect throughout your hospital stay. You'll get a chance to meet our nursing team, therapy team, and our case management team as they all prepare you for a safe discharge. Our goal is to make you feel as comfortable as possible and safe during your stay here with us so you can comfortably participate in activities, working with therapy, breathing, and sleeping comfortably. We use two pain scales to monitor your pain while you stay with us. The first is a basic numerical scale from 0 to 10, otherwise we have the FACES scale to see where you are with that pain. We will continuously ask and monitor your pain and set realistic goals for your recovery. Don't think too hard, there are no wrong answers and you know your body best. There are various types of pain relief that we utilize to keep you comfortable. Our goal is to transition you to oral pain medications as soon as possible. This is what you will be going home with. We do utilize IV pain medication for severe, uncontrolled, and breakthrough pain when working with therapy, getting up, and moving. During your stay on our inpatient units, we aim to feed you as soon as possible. Food is a great distraction and also good medicine to our hearts. Equipment is really important to us. This ensures that you are safe while you are with us and we can best help and assist you. We have a bedpan or a urinal if needed, as well as a bedside commode for slight and small transitions to get you to the bathroom. Gate belts are used for every patient, every time. This allows us to have a hold on you while ambulating and safely assist you. Incentive spirometry, or IS, is one of our tools we use after surgery to prevent complications and wean you off of oxygen. This will be your homework while you are here with us it is used 10 times every hour. Often patients use techniques to help them remember their incentive spirometer. Every commercial you have while watching TV, do a couple, or if you're reading a book or a magazine, every other page. Walkers are used and provided for patients if needed. We use a walker to help get you up to the chair, to the bathroom, and when working with therapy. Receiving IV fluids keeps you hydrated as we transition you back to tolerating oral foods and liquids. IV antibiotics are given to all surgical patients as standard prophylaxis given within your first 24 hours of surgery, each eight hours apart. Lab work is done and taken daily so we can evaluate your case and transition you safely. These values are important for your surgeon as well as your hospital team to evaluate your care. While in the inpatient unit, we will manage your home medication regimen, giving you all of your daily medications while you are here with us. In addition, we will supply you with any medications needed for pain relief. Vital signs, in addition to lab work, are also done routinely and frequently. We will be using this data as well to monitor your care while you are with us. Other big components to our hospital culture are bedside shift report and purposeful rounding. Bedside shift report is when the ongoing nurse and offgoing nurse come to the bedside to discuss your plan of care, why you're here, what we're doing for your care, and how we can help you towards discharge. Purposeful hourly rounding is done every hour that you are awake and throughout the night when you are asleep. We do this to check on you and anticipate any needs that you may have. We like to ask if you're comfortable, if you need help changing your position, if you need help to the restroom, do you have all your personal items and possessions nearby, and what your pain level is. This is a time to make sure the environment is clean and safe for you when getting up and moving. Services available at the hospital include an outpatient pharmacy, where you can have bedside delivery of your discharge medications. Standard copay applies. We also have access to an electronic medical record system called MyChart, where you're able to view test results, lab results, and progress notes from your hospital stay. There are a few complications that can occur after surgery in which we want our patients to be well informed of these signs, symptoms, and how we can incorporate prevention methods to reduce these risks. 
Firstly, deep vein thromboses, DVTs, or blood clots can occur after surgery. You may notice swelling, heat, pain, or tenderness localized to one extremity or the other. We aim to get you up and walking as soon as safely possible after surgery to prevent this complication. Foot and ankle pumps are done in bed, as well as sequential compression devices or SED sleeves put on the legs. These help push blood back up to your heart as well as preventing blood clots. Blood thinners are given dependent on your history and your surgeon's preferences. Whether oral or a once daily injection, these are used in addition to other methods to prevent blood clots. Another potential post-operative complication could be pneumonia. This is seen as chest pain, fever, cough, or shortness of breath. Interventions to reduce this risk include turn cough and deep breathing exercises, getting up and getting you walking as soon as safely possible, as well as use with the incentive spirometer. Finally, with every surgery runs the risk of infection. Signs and symptoms of infection can include pain that is unrelieved by pain medication that you are currently taking, increased swelling, heat, redness, or drainage from the incision site, as well as fever. We at Loveless maintain and hold high accountability for hand washing. This goes for any staff member or provider who would like to look at your incision site. Proper hand washing needs to be completed before, during, and after looking at your incision site. Please let your surgeon know if you have had any recent dental procedures or any dental procedures coming up. If you notice any of these symptoms or you are concerned, please feel free to reach out to us as we are here throughout your entire surgical process. The provider will triage you over the phone and let you know if you need to be seen immediately in the nearest emergency room or you can safely be seen at your next follow-up appointment. If you are asked to visit the ER, please do so quickly and safely. Please return to the facility where you had had that procedure done, and if needed be, please call an ambulance. Physical and occupational therapy will evaluate you shortly after surgery to assess your ability to safely walk, move, and use an assistive device. During this therapy session, you will receive education on movement or weight-bearing restrictions, safety precautions, and prevention of complications. Our goal is to help you get the best results out of your procedure, restore joint flexibility, and encourage independence and safety for a successful return home. Physical therapy focuses on your gross motor skills such as flexibility, strength, and balance. Your goals for physical therapy are, you need to be able to get in and out of bed safely and by yourself, you need to be able to walk household distances safely using a front wheel walker, you need to be able to complete basic transfers, such as getting up and down from a chair, from the toilet. You need to be able to negotiate stairs or a curb step as needed for a safe return home. You need to understand your mobility restrictions or precautions or any other instructions your doctor might have given you after surgery. You need to remember your home exercise program and this will be a program with emphasis on regaining flexibility, strength, and stability for your new joints. Occupational therapy focuses on mastering activities of daily living such as bathing, dressing, and personal hygiene after joint replacement surgery. They can also help you come up with strategies to safely participate in activities such as cooking, housekeeping, and taking care of others. Your goals for occupational therapy are you need to be able to safely perform bathroom transfers using a front wheel walker. You need to be able to bathe and get dressed safely and adhering to any movement restrictions or special instructions your doctor might have given you after surgery. And you need to demonstrate the ability to safely use adaptive equipment if required after surgery. The therapy intervention after surgery will consist of an evaluation in which the therapist will collect lots of information concerning your prior level of functioning and a description of your home environment. Then we will explain any movement restrictions or safety precautions and subsequently will help you get out of bed and practice different transfers and walking using a front wheel walker. 
At the end of the session, and if you're medically stable, we will encourage you to stay out of bed and we will teach you some basic exercises to start working on regaining your flexibility and your strength. Last but not least, we will make recommendations for your follow-up care and need for equipment and we will teach you how to use it correctly before we send you home. Some of the most common devices we recommend are a front-wheel walker, which is a walker with two wheels in front and nothing on the back. If you have one at home, you can bring it. We would like to make sure it's in a good condition and it's set for your high. And if you don't have one, we will provide one after surgery and it will be run through your insurance. Hip kit or long handle equipment. The occupational therapist might suggest that you use adaptive equipment such as long handle tools to help you maintain independence, but at the same time to make sure that you do not break your hip precautions. This is not regularly provided in the hospital, but if needed, you can get it online or at any of the local medical supply stores. Bathroom equipment. The bathroom is the most dangerous room in your house. In preparation for your joint replacement surgery, we strongly suggest that you install grab bars in the shower and a raised toilet seat with a safety frame. These items are not normally covered by insurance, although you can call your insurance directly and find out and order them, or you can just buy them out of pocket and install them before your surgery. Abductor pillow. After total hip replacement, some patients might require an abductor pillow to prevent the surgical leg from accidentally crossing midline when you're asleep. If needed, you will be instructed to use a pillow in between your legs when you're resting or when you're sleeping. From a case management standpoint, you can expect to meet one of our case management team members on the first day of your visit to the hospital. Case management will help you with all the things you need to successfully transition home. It could be a shower chair, a front wheel walker, a hip abductor, a hip kit, or a wheelchair. Whatever it is you need to transition successfully, case management is here to help you. Again, we recognize that every patient has a choice. We want to thank you for choosing Loveless Health System. Our commitment is to providing the highest quality, excellent care at every single one of our Loveless Health System facilities. We want to make sure that your hospital stay is a positive experience. Thank you for choosing Loveless.